On this slide, we talk about a very important concept of ideal sheaf. So this will get used again and again. So it is very important to have this always in mind, ready to be used. So this is where algebraic geometry starts. So x be a algebraic set over k. So you have some polynomial defining a set. And let y be a closed subset of x. So y is a closed subset of x. So y is a closed subset of x. So basically y is cut out by polynomials. So say this is x and this y is just consists of say four points. Yeah, so I'm marking these points in rust color. Yeah, so some polynomial cut out these four points out of x and this is how you got a closed subset of x. So we define a sheaf on y. So this sheaf on y comes from sheaf on x. So basically whatever sheaf is there on x, which is the ring of regular functions. So you define y intersection u, where u is a open subset of x. Yeah, so we have already defined uh, what ox is and what ox of u is. So this is a sheaf. So let us summarize it. Y is contained in X and we have the arrow in the opposite direction. So this is a homomorphism of sheaves by restricting regular functions. So basically you have a sheaf of regular functions on an algebraic set X and you restrict it to this closed set Y. Yeah, the kernel of this sheaf, so we know this is a homomorphism of a sheaves, so we have a kernel sheaf also, but this kernel sheaf is called the ideal sheaf. So the kernel sheaf is called the ideal sheaf. and you write it as i y by x. So this sheaf is onto, yeah, because you obtain it by restriction. So this sheaf is onto for all these u are as a fine open, yeah. So if you define it on a fine open sets, since you are getting O by just by restricting functions on X, it is true for all A fine open. Note that it is not true for all open. This is an algebraic geometry that we are using A fine open sets, but this is not true for all open. Yeah, and I will in the end talk about a confusion which I had because of not knowing this particular remark that it is not true for all open but only true for a fine open. Just to recall what a fine open is, you have this algebraic set X and you have uh, points taken out, a finite number of points taken out because of some polynomial cutting this set. So this is the a fine open set we get from X. So this is the a fine open set U we get from X by taking out two finite points. Okay, so now we come to a very important short exact sequence. 
on an algebraic set X. So you have y as a closed set of x and then you have the ideal sheaf, you have this short exact sequence. Yeah, then this, this, uh, this is an injective map into O of x, then you have a surjective map to O of y and then you go to 0. So let us write the injectivity and surjectivity down. So this is the injective map. and this is the surjective map. And you have O of Y ISO2 you have O of X modulo I Y of X so you take out all the functions which are not in O Y so this could be a pre-sheaf and since O of Y is a sheaf, you obtain O of Y by sheafifying it. That is, you basically think in terms of stocks and certain gluing. Yeah. So always a good plan is to think in terms of stocks. And when you start proving about stocks, you always talk about small neighborhood around the point and then its intersection and start gluing them together. So now let us talk about the confusion which I had and you might not have because I was thinking too much about it. So this space Y is contained in space X. Yeah. So from the general definition O of Y we have this reverse map O of X. So I'm writing O bracket Y but you could write O subscript Y and O subscript X. Yeah. So uh, yeah, make to make that clear. So if you think in terms of definition, then this O of Y, which I told you to think of as O subscript Y rather than O bracket of Y. So this O subscript Y is larger, in fact, much bigger than O of X. If you just think naively in terms of open sets. Yeah. But you should not think in terms of the just the basic definition of sheaves because we are dealing with affine open sets and on affine open sets the way we have defined functions on O of X because you know some functions actually might not be defined on all of X but they are still in O of X so the important point is that sections of O Y come all from O of X yeah sections of O Y come all from O of X So O of Y is not larger than O of X. In fact, O of X might have more functions than O of Y. So you do not think in terms of the naive definition that O of Y should be larger. O of Y is not larger. In fact, it contains lesser functions than O of X. Yeah. 